Hello, in this video, we're gonna look at the clinical anatomy of the superior vena cava, as well as the zygous hemizygous system. The superior vena cava is a valveless, thin-walled, low-pressure tube that drains deoxygenated blood from the upper half of the body, including the head, arms, and thoracic wall into the right atrium of the heart. The right atrium also drains the inferior vena cava which contains valves, of course, to prevent backflow. The superior vena cava drains blood from the upper body, but also drains blood from below the diaphragm via the azygous vein here. Taking a closer look at this area, the superior vena cava have three main tributaries. The first is the right and left brachiocephalic veins, which drain into and forms the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava then drains into the right atrium. There are no valves in either the superior vena cava or the brachiocephalic vein. Halfway along its course, before it enters the pericardium, which wraps around the heart, the superior vena cava receives the azygous arch. This is the second main tributary. The third tributary of the superior vena cava is the mediastinal and pericardial veins. The superior vena cava passes through the pericardium as it enters the right atrium. The superior vena cava is a large valveless venous channel formed by the union of the brachiocephalic veins. The brachiocephalic veins are formed at the confluence of the subclavian and internal jugular vein. The convergence of the right subclavian and internal jugular vein occur behind the sternoclavicular joint, drawn in gray here. The clinical anatomy to consider uh, or surrounding the superior vena cava is the superior vena cava obstruction. Patients with an obstructed superior vena cava means they are unable to drain blood efficiently from the upper limbs, neck and face into the heart. As a result, they can present with the following signs and symptoms, such as headache, swollen face, cyanosis, dyspnea. These symptoms and signs are typically due to a lung mass partially occluding or compressing against the superior vena cava. When the superior vena cava is partially obstructed, obviously there is an obstruction in blood flow. As a result of this uh, disruption in blood flow, collateral circulation occurs, the right arm can become swollen. In serious cases, cerebral edema can result. Superior vena cava obstruction can cause a plethora of the face and neck when the arms are particularly raised above the heads. This will increase impedance of the superior vena cava drainage due to the mass, for example, pushing against it. When superior vena cava drainage becomes more obstructed, the heart obviously beats faster to compensate, so you get palpitations. The etiology of superior vena cava obstruction, as mentioned, include lung cancer, especially non-small cell lung carcinomas, lymphoma, specifically, specifically mediastinal lymph node enlarging, characteristic of Hodgkin's lymphoma, Another cause is thrombosis of the superior vena cava. The rates of thrombosis have increased, especially due to the increasing number of intravascular devices running through this area, including pacemakers, for example, pick lines. The diagnosis of superior vena cava obstruction is typically clinical, supported by imaging, such as chest x-ray and a CT of the chest. Here is an example of a chest x-ray of someone who presented with facial and upper limb swelling, unintentional weight loss, and dyspnea. On the chest x-ray, you can make out the superior vena cava draining into the right atrium. You also notice an irregular lesion in the upper right lobe compressing against the superior vena cava, which explains this person's symptoms. With the CT chest, you are able to outline the superior vena cava and the irregular mass in more detail. This person likely has lung cancer causing superior vena cava obstruction. 
The management of superior vena cava obstruction can be divided into the acute management, which is where patients may be symptomatic, and then you have the definitive management, which typically involves some sort of procedure. The acute management is sitting the person up and giving them oxygen. Dexamethasone to reduce edema and swelling in the area also helps. The definitive management is a stent inserted to open up the superior vena cava vessel, allowing better return to the right atrium. Radiotherapy is used to reduce the size of a tumor or mass, if there is any, and this is for symptomatic relief. If it is a suspected malignancy that is causing the superior vena cava obstruction, a biopsy will be taken to confirm the type of cancer, and this is obviously followed by chemotherapy. One of the main tributaries of the superior vena cava is the azygous vein I mentioned earlier. The azygous vein forms the azygous hemiazygous system. This system has two main functions. The first, the azygous hemiazygous system provides an important collateral pathway in cases of uh, inferior vena cava or superior vena cava obstruction. The second main function is that it drains venous blood from the thoracic wall and the upper lumbar regions. Here is the 12 thoracic vertebrae, the heart. The sternal angle is an imaginary line that crosses the T4 to T5 vertebral level. Here is the superior vena cava which enters the right atrium the azygous vein drains into the superior vena cava. The azygous vein is a connection between the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava uh, slash right renal vein. The hilum of the kidney is situated at another imaginary line called the transpyloric plane, which is the lumbar one vertebral level. The zygous vein starts at the T12 to L2 vertebral level typically and then uh, drains up. The zygous vein ascends on the right side up to the level of T4, then passes anterior to form an arc joining the superior vena cava. This is the zygous arc. The zygous vein drains the right 2nd to 11th right intercostal veins. The zygous vein is the continuation of the right ascending lumbar vein. The zygous hemizygous system forms a H shaped network in the posterior mediastinum, anterior to the body of the thoracic vertebrae. The azygous vein gives the entire right arm of the H. The hemiazygous gives the left lower, and there is also this little accessory hemiazygous vein, uh, which gives the left upper segment of the H. The accessory hemiazygous vein has more variations than the azygous and hemiazygous veins. Usually it drains the second to seventh intercostal veins. The accessory hemiazygous vein joins and drains into the zygous vein at about the T8 vertebral level. The hemiazygous vein starts similar to the azygous vein, but on the left side of the vertebral column at T12 to L2 vertebral level. The hemiazygous crosses over and joins with the azygous at about the T8 vertebral level. Major tributaries of the hemiazygous are the left posterior posterior 8th to 11th intercostal veins. It can also connect to the left renal vein and is the continuation of the left ascending lumbar vein from the iliac vein. I hope you enjoyed this video on superior vena cava and azygous hemizygous vein uh, clinical anatomy. Thank you for watching.